guys settle. As soon as they get Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to call the uh, executive committee meeting to for October 10th to order at 10.05. I'm going to just switch to 10.06. And Annette, would you please lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turn to Ria. Thank you, Annette. As before, it was three to three times. No use. Could we do roll call, please? Parker. Here. Ballage. Here. Berkowitz. Here. Dean Schlotman. Here. Freeman. Here. Mueller. Here. Pretzel. <laughs> Richmond. Here. Chenier. Yes. Van Dyne. Here. Williams. Here. Ogala. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. First thing on our agenda is the approval of the executive committee meeting minutes from September 12th. Can I get a motion? Motion Schlotman. Second Parker. Second Parker. Roll call, please. Parker? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Dean Schlotman? Yes. Freeman? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Pretzel? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Trenier? Yes. Van Dyne? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Before I get into anything, I just wanted to mention that um, you don't see Sandy or here. Sandy's on vacation today, and Pearl, unfortunately, uh, was in an accident this morning. So if you guys could just add her to her prayers and hope that everything is okay. Uh, we don't have any details beyond beyond that. So I, that's why you don't see some one of the ladies in the one of our admins in the room today. So. Okay, moving on to old business. Number one is authorizing payment to the Family Guidance Center for operation costs for their mobile outreach services. And I know Carla is here. So, Carla, why don't you both come up and then push the little face on there? Yeah, like a little person. <clears throat> you could push Steve. I always the like to push him. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Carla Alessio Poli Candriotis. I have to tell you, it's so nice to see these faces and to come back after a couple months and tell you what your partial investment has done um, for your communities. I'm with Sarah Richardson. She is the vice president of the Harm Reduction and Outreach Program. If you recall, um, out of the opioid settlement funds, you have tendered $75,000 to Family Guidance Centers, a not-for-profit organization that has been providing opioid services throughout the state of Illinois, but so focused here in Will County for a number of years. They have been staffing, uh, providing all the material services, personnel, expenses for that van for the last two months. What I'd like to tell you is that not just about the numbers, of how much Narcan is being passed out, these kits that are being passed out. Let's talk about humans. Throughout Will County, there was 16 direct referrals into treatment, 16 lives that know that there's a possibility for change. 10 of those individuals are still in inpatient treatment. That's less than two months Monday through Friday. What we're averaging here is, please forgive me, is phenomenal. It's saving a life one per week. And I have to tell you what we have found in the past, and I think the program will show it as well, is that it grows. You know, that first person talks to the next person and the next person, the family member, or the next person talks to that person about success and availability. So I'm thrilled to tell you about that number. What else I wanna tell you is where your van has been and it's been all over the county. 
one of the last presentations I gave is that there is a Will County Chiefs of Police organization. And the meeting I went to a couple weeks ago had approximately 50 or 60 individuals of law enforcement represented throughout Will County. Your van was there, personnel was there, and they asked me to present. And from that meeting, obviously we shared information, but it's the follow-up that's amazing. Um, Family Guidance will now be presenting to staff and law enforcement with your Will County Forest Preserve. Um, there are uh, there was sufficient communication at that time regarding forest preserve concerns regarding people that use the forest preserve not just for recreation but for housing, and so the the chief of the um, Will County Chiefs of Police is the chief of the forest preserve. So she was very much engaged. Immediately asked for our direct intervention because they want to be able to solve the problem. Um, I ask you to consider what that means overall. Um, we have made some incredible relationships. We have a liaison assigned to family guidance in this harm reduction van from the city of Joliet Police Department. We have a liaison through the Joliet Fire Department, Lockport Fire Department, other agencies that want the, inf the information they have to be given to us so we know some of the best places to go. Um, there is also now what's being communicated to law enforcement is the number. It's called Mars Now. Mars Now is a phone number that any law enforcement or anybody can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and ask for help to get into treatment. And um, that's being distributed through uh, patrol officers and most of the patrol cars, whether it's county or Bolingbrook or any of the police department, Piatone, it's all over the place. And what's interesting is the actually the surprise phone call I get after when they say, Carla, you know, it worked. I said, I know, I know. They put the person in touch with the individual who is trained to have that communication. Establishes um, a connection. We then provide the transportation for that person to go directly into treatment. You eliminate the barriers saying, well, you know, we'll get to you in a couple days. White knuckle it until we can get to you. That does not happen. Or, you know, call friend. This is where we're at. We get a ride. That doesn't happen. We have enough experience to know that when the person actually sees that glimmer of hope, that's when you have to seize it. That's when you have to say yes. That's when you have to say, come with me. And I have to tell you, your investment has been phenomenal. There are many things that I, and I could talk about this all the time, and I won't do that to you. <clears throat> but I'm asking for you to do today is to look at the numbers. Sarah's in a much better position to give you very, very specific numbers. What I'm gonna ask you to do today is look back at what was asked for and see the total, what the total budget was. And now with your already have expended the 75,000, the amount that is being requested is, please help me, um, $278,729. That's the amount that will budget this van for a year. I'm asking you to consider having that budget go back to September 1st and then Family Guidance with their not-for-profit status will be reimbursing some of their own expenses that they've been paying because they provide their own security on site. We do not use law enforcement security for the van because we know that the um, presence of law enforcement in the situation that some people are in does not um, facilitate communication. It does not facilitate initial trust. So we provide our own um, security. You have a lot of things you can do with this award, and I do call it an award. Um, you could control it as much as you like. You know, you're working with an agency that has been in existence since 1965. So we have other resources that we can withstand the cost of this as uh, we present you continuous reports. 
If you'd like me to come once a month, every couple months, to some point you get sick of me, that's up to you. Um, if you prefer them to be written reports monthly and you have staff then present it to you, however you want it, I have incredible confidence here. You're not going to be disappointed. Thank you, Judy. Um, first of all, thank you for being here today and for what you do out there. Um, so, um, so badly needed. Um, and this information is just incredible. Uh, it, it just brings a lot of hope and you're making a big difference out there. What I'm wondering is um, if you can share any um, information about if any of the people that you have um, uh, helped in the past have had an issue or been um, uh, had a, a law enforcement issue and perhaps had served a jail time or anything. If you've had that experience to work with that individual and if you've had any impact on avoiding uh, reoccurrence or, or and making a positive impact on recidivism because that's, I mean, we've got a couple programs working on that, being there for them and their families. And um, do you also see uh, an opportunity to grow and make a, a more positive impact for those individuals and their families as well? I'm not sure exactly how to answer that question. I can tell you this. It was, um, Best practices will tell you for the treatment of opioid addiction, you're talking about an individual basis treatment plan, whether that's medically assisted treatment, um, whether or not they need inpatient, intensive outpatient, right? Can I tell you a story? Last week I was at a family wedding in Iowa and I received a phone message that someone who's really dear to my heart was in Orlando, Florida. And there is a, a program called Oxford, which provides housing for people who are coming out of jails or prisons or off the street. And it's clean and sober and they're wonderful houses and they support each other, right? And it's a national organization. There's 2,500 people there. And the person I was talking to said, I wanted to go to the problem solving court program and how it relates to Oxford. And this man was being, uh, was the speaker. And he talked about how, you know, when he used to get in trouble, it was because of the cops. It was their fault. And 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 he goes, and, you know, so yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in the Will County Jail. And of course, this person picks up. And he goes, and I met this woman eventually named Julie. I said, I want you to meet somebody fill out this application. You don't have to do anything, but just come meet her. And <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, I don't remember the young man. I don't know his name. It doesn't matter. But he said that I went to see her the first time and I thought, who does she think she is? She's got nothing for me. And it came the second time. He says, actually, you know, she, maybe she, it's okay. I, maybe I'll give her a little bit of a chance. And she told me, I'm not going to set you up to fail. I'm going to give you an opportunity to work really, really hard. And if I worked really, really hard, she would have my back. And she'd make sure the services didn't go away. And that's the key. You can't give somebody lunch and say, have a good day, and walk away from a hungry person. These programs have to be there when you need them. And they have to be consistent. And if they fail or they relapse, you have to be able to have a continuum of care. What this man said was to this Oxford program there, but for the fact that I landed at the Will County Jail and I had the sense 
to participate in their drug court program, I wouldn't be here today. And he is one of the lead um, people in the Oxford program in the Florida area. And so the individual who was listening to him, he said he couldn't help himself. So after the speech was done, he walked up to him and said, um, it was quite the presentation. And the man says, thank you very much. And he says, um, I know that judge. And he goes, you do? He goes, yeah, it's my mom. And I, and he goes, I was so proud. I said, I'm so proud of you that you're there representing Will County. You don't know who you touch. You don't know when you're spending these this kind of money, and it's a lot of money to ask you. But I'm asking you to spend the money where there's history of success, when you're working with people who have years of opportunities to use best practices, okay? I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yes, you're gonna get people out of jail and in jail and back and forth. Yes, that's what we do. It's a habit, mm -hmm. but, um, but what I'm hearing is, is you have, um, you have the procedure set up. You're there when, if they, if the need arises, they need to come back to you. You're there. Um, they will find their way there, the people there to help them get there. Um, and one other thought I had is if you meet people who are homeless, uh, do you have the ability to also um, address that at that time and in the future, help them with that as well? It depends on what their basis of homelessness exists, right? So um, if family guidance in, in an encampment or whatever meets up with somebody who may be a veteran, one of the trained individuals on that van who have all the resources available may make a determination that my first call needs to be to uh, the veteran organization so that they can do a complete needs assessment. Is this finding out what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Is it mental health issues? Is it drug or alcohol addiction? Is it this? Is it, you know what I mean? So one of the reasons why we wanted a seat at the table with the City of Joliet Police Department and the City of Joliet Fire Department is I'm not certain if you know what they have, but they have um, once a month meetings with so many different social services. And they literally go around the table and it'd be, okay, Mr. Bouch, what's your need this month? And then they go through the table and say, who can fill this one next and next? And, and they don't go away, you know? So there, you cannot kidnap and take. You have to develop a relationship. Developing that relationships, meaning what are the issues and how can either family guidance do it or how does family guidance get the services that this individual needs? Thank you. Can I add? Okay. Please. Uh, and the other thing I, I think is important to understand is that every patient who comes into family guidance centers has at minimum a three person care team. So a physician, a clinical counselor and a case manager. And that case manager is doing a lot of that comprehensive holistic support for that individual, whether they're in light touch outpatient or intensive residential, right? So we're, especially with folks who are experiencing homelessness, which is the majority really of the folks that we got into treatment so far in the last two months, and the folks that we're engaging on the street through this harm reduction van, if we come into contact with them again out on the street, we can call our case manager back at the office and check in and do that care coordination in a really integrated community-based way. So I, th I think Micah has her light on. And before we do that, Micah, I brought Car Carl up before we did a motion to put it on the table. If I could get a motion, motion Mueller, second Trenere. Go ahead, Micah. Good morning. Thank you for coming back again. Thank you. Um, so I know that this has come up several times, but there was a contract with the county that has been being worked on with our state's attorney, if I'm correct. Has that been resolved yet? We've never been presented with a contract. Um, every time that I ever had an experience with family guidance, um, all services that the judiciary or the county has received from family guidance, it's been 
without contract. Like right now, I don't know if you know, Family Guidance provides MAT treatment within your jail every day. Every day, Family Guidance is in the Will County Adult Detention Facility. There is no contract. Every day, Family Guidance meets with each and every one of your problem-solving courts because the judiciary relies on their assessments and the referrals for treatment and their aftercare. Um, whatever the county board thinks in this regard, because it's opiate funded money or whatever, we're under contract with many different um, municipal, but most of the time, it's a memorandum of understanding. I'll give you an example. Joliet Township has now purchased, I want to say, four vans. And what they do is that they transport people to treatment, doctor's appointments, and employment. So we have a memorandum of understanding with the Joliet Township that if we have patients, clientele, that need transportation to treatment, I'm not talking about just going from here to inpatient. I'm talking about when they get out and they have a an appointment every day or four days a week. We're paying Joliet Township X number of dollars when they go to their house and pick them up and bring them to bring them to care every day. You know, every day, 2,500 people in the state of Illinois are receiving services from Family Guidance every day on some level. So should the county in this instance feel like it needs a contract? Okay, we're telling you what we do, what we have done. And I'm saying that at this point, asking for the uh, costs of the program to be supported if you want a contract and yeah, I think what you guys do is is awesome. The, I think the problem is is that because your base is not in the county, that's not true. Yeah. Um, you have three offices of family guidance in Will County. They're so corporate your, office. I should say your headquarters. The the main headquarters is not in Will County. You have your little corporate office subgroups is. over here in Will County, but your main one is not. That's true. So if I could have Mary explain where we're at on this, because I want to be sure that. We're all good. Thank you. Mary, you want to sit That's down? okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have, you know, been working with Judy and Kim and Sherry and Katie, Dean Schlotman. So, did work with them. Um, we did prioritize HERO, and I have sent an agreement relative to HERO to county board. I am, I think it's okay. I haven't heard back whether it's okay or not okay. Um, they would be slightly different. Every agreement with the opioid, opioid is going to be slightly different, but we have the template, I think, ready to go. So it's been a little bumpy, it's been a little bit bumpy. Um, we have to make sure that the executive's office is on board because they are the ones who are going to have to administer the program. So, yeah. And, yeah. So, from the legal standpoint of our reporting back to um, the feds. The feds Correct. You. We, we have to have documentation that the money has been spent in conformance with the opioid settlement agreements. So that's and and I I pretty much have that template I think ready to go I so we're okay I to will, I it would have to be different I mean proceed here hero is going to be a direct payment that's going to be split up into payments after the first payment is given they will submit reports as to whether or not they are in compliance after which a second payment will be made to them and they will then have to be required to provide documentation that they have used that money appropriately. And that my understanding is because the committee viewed them a little bit differently than family guidance. Um, Judge Polly Condriotis has indicated that they have already expended money. So there's would be more of a reimbursement. Type agreement where 
they have already spent the money. She's asked if the contract could be dated from September 1st and they re receive reimbursement. So that would be more of a send the reports as to how you have spent it and we would reimburse for what has already been spent. Thank you. If I could, um, Chair Ogala, um, we did receive the proposed contract from Mary on Monday. Um, Katie and Sherry and myself and Chair Ogala have not even had a chance to go through it to determine if it's an acceptable program to be putting forward at this point um, for the HERO organization. So it's not, uh, we're not in that process as of yet. There had been previous discussion about funding HERO and funding family guidance prior to setting forth a new program for the expenditure of these funds, but I don't know where we're at. On right. That. That's exactly correct. And my, my intent was we had had this conversation for a long time. We've had presentations from both groups and um, we're going to, I, I would like us to go ahead and move forward with both these two groups we did with HERO. We have family guidance here today. And then we'll take the time between now and the next time that we look at funding anybody and get an agreement that we can work. I don't know for a fact that we can't have a committee of county board members that makes the decision because I think it's better that 22 people make a final decision rather than one person. That's my opinion. There is no tag or tie with this. So it's not, and we've had Katie and Sherry, people, what we've worked with before um, come before us, like she said, family guidance. Family guidance has been around forever. As long as I've been on the board, I've seen Carla come here and talk about it. This other young lady is new, so I haven't seen her. So that was my intent. Let's move these two forward. We've yep. been talking to them forever. They're doing a good portion of the work that we've seen great benefits already from this. And um, I know, Jim, I'm going to let you talk next before anyone else, please. Thank you. Well, thank you. So, um, and I know this came before finance. Let's just call it six months ago. I don't know what it's it is or that. Wild. And there was the the whole big proposal and all that kind of stuff. And then we initially just did the seventy five thousand. And I, I'm in agreement. To have had conversations. And I think what we do is we try and do like you know four quarterly payments, or you know we'll pick a time frame, and let's do something like that where we you know give you uh, four four bundles of money. And then you come back and you periodically report to the executive committee and maybe just, you know, give a financial report, whatever to finance. So we could then in turn bring it up to the executive. So whatever protocol makes everybody come. I mean, if that's, yeah. if that's good with that's, everybody, that's I think what that's we're the. Doing with hero, except mm -hmm. they asked for less. So we did it in 50, 50, we split that cost. This is a larger amount of money. So if we split it quarterly. Where she comes before, and she, I think she should come before the exec, the finance committee, asking for the next funds by giving a presentation of what what this money has done already. You've told us what has happened since you got the first amount to purchase that van, and what has happened since then. That's really positive because while our health department does one thing, you guys provide a completely different service. You're out all hours of the day and night. You're not restricted by any bounds of any union contracts that you can only work these hours. Right. And that's a big difference. And what our health department does is more of the outreach during the day, which is great. So we have a compliment there and that makes a lot of sense to me. So I think that's something, and then we'll have time. We did get that thing. I think it was Monday. I was not even at work. I was not able to even look at an email Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday have been busy. And then here we are today. So we haven't had a chance. I would like to have us look at whatever the agreement is um, and then come up with a plan for a committee structure of some sort. But I believe that um, there is no ties here for any particular way to appropriate funds. It's our job to appropriate funds. I would like to see this board be the ones who can and make those decisions um, and, and be able to ta have the credit for doing the research, taking the time and, and getting that done because um, so much of it, everything seems to be out of our hands. I don't know that we need to get put this out of our hands. So, so do we need a motion to put? Hold on, oh. Judy. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. Hang on a second. Well, no, but he's like, so, 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 so like, Matt, okay. ask some questions. So, he, no, I, I, right, Matt, just a second. So Jim asked that. I asked Jim to speak first because he's a I, finance I, I chair. I'm watching the whole thing. But so this is the second executive meeting that I've had my light on to ask questions of a presenter, and I haven't been called. So, so as I'm the sorry. as the okay. chair of the committee, I can ask the chair of another committee to speak before I have somebody else speak. 
you can do that. You guys go ahead and do whatever little shenanigans you want on the side there. I was coming to you next, Meta, because, right, we didn't get to finish talking, and we will have a motion after that. I don't know. I just look at things as I like to move things forward if they make sense, and it sounds like it makes sense. It sounds like the overall atmosphere within this room is people are have had a history working with you guys, you late, your group, um, and, you know, I just want to, you know, see what we can do to make, make things happen, so. The chair can make it. The chair can make the decision on who they call I to speak. <laughs> I don't understand this. This is like so crazy. Meta, go ahead. Hi. Let's forget about all that. I have some questions for you folks. I um, super appreciate what you said about that each person has three care professionals helping because that's really important with the recidivism like Julie was asking about, our member Berkowitz was asking about. Um, what I wanted to ask you folks about is I know that we have a need for uh, warm handoffs from emergency rooms to uh, folks who need um, further treatment, because like we've all read here or heard here, if we don't get them when there's hope, if we don't get them when there's, you know, if we don't get help to them when they, when they're ready for it, we lose them. So do you folks do anything with warm handoffs in the emergency rooms in the, in the county? Yes, there's a, um, representative from family guidance that is assigned to both silver cross hospital and st joe's hospital okay great thank and you can i also add a lot of the referrals into treatment actually have come from joliet fire department they have a assigned social worker to work with people who've overdosed and that's really a critical time to get people into treatment in that like 48 hours so a lot of our really successful referrals have been that social worker sitting in the ED of a Joliet area hospital calling us, we send the Uber and we bring them to treatment. So that's really also what's happening with this program. Okay, Go ahead, Julie. okay. Um, I just wanted to say too, the way that um, Cherry and I have discussed multiple times is this money that comes in, comes in sporadically and we don't ever know exactly when we're going to get a payment, if we're going to get a payment, how much the payment's going to be. It just sort of shows up and then we're like, ooh, this is a great organization. The restrictions for what we can do and where we can give this money are very, very tight. So <clears throat> there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. So this organization, I think, is fantastic and obviously falls in line with what we're doing. Um, the reason that, you know, Sherry and I have talked about many times on why we, you know, can only give out so much money at once is because we don't want to just give it all away and leave everybody stranded. Because again, we don't know when the money is gonna come in. So when people are asking for smaller payments and, you know, we do the, um, the two payments out, it's a smaller amount. I think what, um, Chair Richmond said about, you know, having this be out quarterly, that's fine. I, I don't know if I necessarily always agree with the fact that they should be, it should be a, a reimbursal because a lot of these organizations are coming to us for the money because they don't have it. And there's a need in our communities for them to use this money. That's why they're coming to us with opioid money and opioid money is not taxpayer dollars. This is coming from a lawsuit. So it's, it's not taxpayers money. It's not. You know, anything. So as soon as we get it, we want to get it out to the communities as quickly as possible so we can get as much good out of it as quickly as possible. So that's, you know, all I wanted to comment. I agree. Um, I think that it seems like, you know, it, this is this is why people talk about government, right? So it takes so long to do just one little simple thing. So, so, and I, I get very impatient with it too, but I agree with Katie. Um, I don't mind the reimbursement program. And of course, we want to make sure that legally we're doing everything that we are supposed to do. So that that is the question. But I do think that we, um, uh, the, I took a glance at the agreement that um, Mary was talking about and it, there's a lot of stuff in there that I'm not sure should be in there. So we do need to go over that and see if it fits our needs better. But I think that we need to move forward as fast as we can. Okay, so Jim. All right. When so, you make, make so, your motion. So I make the motion that we <laughs> do it in four payments. Let's work out just a little bit of language that may or may not have to be included. 
and let's, as long as we can do it, if we can give it to you in advance and you just report back to us how it was spent. Perfect. I mean, it meets, I think it meets Katie and Sherry, as long as it meets the opioid requirements, let's just move forward and let's just get it going. So I, I don't know how does that translate to a motion, but somebody Tim, package it up for me. Tim, right? clarifying One thing. follow up question based on what Mary said, Judge Polychondriotis, um, have you in fact expended funds that you would be using these funds for reimbursement? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you already have receipts and invoices and things that could be submitted to substantiate these funds. Indeed, okay. yes. Thank you. Right. So, so you need a motion to... A, mo a motion for four payments and... To be distributed. To be distributed. On a quarterly basis. On a quarterly basis. With, um, without, a con without a contract. Without a contract with, re you know, receipts to follow the money. And, and reports. Report and report reports. To the finance committee. Okay. Good. Hang on. Excuse me. Is that to September 1st? So that, okay. Oh, yeah. To September 1st. Adding until September, Adding until September 1st. 1st. Hang on, Jackie has her hand up. In a second. Yeah, I just have one question. It's for the state's attorney. I'd like to know if that uh, complies with our responsibilities yeah. under the rules. It's completely contradiction to what the advice Well, we need to up here. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm not going to go for it. Then I will be a no. Thank you. It's not in the restrictions. It's not an opioid restriction. It's not what her advice is. So that's the difference. I yeah. So my advice has always been to have a contract and with the utmost respect for Judge Polychondriotis, the documents that she has got had with regard to other payouts from the county may have been titled a memorandum of understanding, but if there is consideration and enough detail for both parties, it's still a contract irrespective of what the title is. So my recommendation is you have a written contract. Otherwise, there is nothing we can do to enforce and require the documentation. They are a very good organization. There is absolutely no disagreement about that. I think the program fits within the opioid program, but there should be an agreement. Yeah. Yes. And someone has not gotten their money from a year ago. The invoice was sent in July. Just Okay, so here's the thing, you guys. The opioid dollars came. We heard from the state's attorney that we had opioid dollars. That we had to distribute these opioid dollars. So, at that time, I, I got a team together, a Democrat and Republicans. So they could work together, hash it out. In the beginning, all those funds were, went to a county organization. We did something for housing, various different things. Then, then they haven't come forward for any other dollars at this time. So then other groups started talking to Sherry and Katie. Heroes was one and Family Guidance was another and there's been another one, I think. And I, I, I said, you know what, this, this agreement has come up recently because it wasn't um, presented to us before. So, I mean, honestly, we should have hashed everything out before we said, here's your money, start spending it. We didn't do that, so we're taking a backtrack here. So for me, we did approve Hero at Finance Committee. I said, I'd like to bring forward just hero and family guidance. We've worked with both of them for a very long time. We know they're reputable and we never, we did not give hero nor is the intent to give family guidance, the full payout. We've had the, the, the requirement that they will come to the finance committee, committee, give a report, which would be obviously more detailed than this because we spent money on this and that same thing with, with hero. And then they'd get an extra payout. So she did want to backdate it to September because they've already spent some funds. That makes sense to us. To me, it does. I don't know. And then I think moving forward, we'll have time. We'll look at this agreement, take it to the caucuses. People can decide how we want to do it. There's a, there's a variety of ways that other counties do it. So there is no written in stone way that the Will County has to do it. Okay. The staff hasn't had a chance to look in it. Mary did look into it. She didn't have all the details at the time we talked. She did tell me that she looked in other counties and that everybody does it a bit differently. So we can do it a bit differently. We can take a little bit from every county and do it.
But until we get to that point, because we aren't going to distribute any, my intent would be not to distribute any more dollars until we've taken the time, look at what the other counties have done. And then from there, we can say, okay, this is what we want Will County to do. We want to go ahead and do A, B, C, D. And we would have a written agreement at this time. I just think we can process these three, these two through and then go forward with a written agreement. It's not tied like ARPA was or, or cannabis uh, dollars or even the CARES dollars. There's no ties like that, except that you can only use this money for these specific things. So, okay, I see lots of lights. So, Joe. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Ogala. Um, I've, in the past, I've always respected the, the opinion of the state's attorney and 95% of the time, I always uh, lean on, on her suggestions. Um, but this one here, um, I have complete faith in family services uh, with the memo, you know, the memo of understanding the last thing that I would like to do is to hold this up because um, I, I know people um, that need services and, and I've had experiences with this. And the last thing I want to do is to keep them waiting an, an extra minute because the funding is not there. So I would be willing to agree with you, Chair, and, and move this forward. And then at a later date, if if we do need a contract, then we do. But I, I definitely don't want to hold this up at all. Thank you. Thank you. Because you do know that we do have Annette, our new employee, and she's our project manager. So we can get her working on this to see what do the other counties do so she can give us a report to us. So I know Annette Parker wanted to say something. So I agree with Joe. I feel like there is a hang up. I can't really put my finger on exactly what the hang up is, but two <clears throat> people who are in charge of the committee agree are in agreement. We have the money. We've brought this organization back several times. I think just get the money out. I mean, people are in need. I don't know why we keep going back round and round and round. So I agree, get it out and then let's figure out the final details moving forward. I think maybe it would be helpful if staff could get everybody a copy again of what the standard is for us giving out the opioid money because it's pretty restrictive. And if they don't comply with it, then, you know, it stops. So adding all this extra layer on it right now, just it's pretty restrictive. So if we could get a copy of that for everybody to read, I think that would, uh, I think that would alleviate some of what we're doing. Chair, may I? Thank, thank you, Chair Ogawa. Uh, I just want to share with my uh, uh, fellow board members and here on the committee. Um, you know, we are we have a crisis out there, and people are in need. Uh, people need these services; um, they're within reach. This not only impacts the individual, but the families. I know within my own family, we, we, you know, we're experiencing this. There are a lot of people suffering and they need this help. And I've been very happy with um, your uh, willingness to come back many, many times. I'm completely amazed at what you're achieving out there. I fully support this and uh, what we've uh, proposed to how to move forward. And I'd like to call the vote, please. That's, is it possible to ask us? Okay. No, not at committee, Julie. You can try, but not at committee. I'm the only one who can call the vote. So we have Micah and then Jackie. Thank you. Um, so I just wanna say, and I've, I've spoken with the judge many times in the past on various issues. My very, one of my very best friend's son died of a drug overdose. Her daughter has overdosed multiple times and is currently in treatment in Oak Park. I am 100% behind this, but I'm gonna follow the letter of the law and make sure that we do what we've done in the past, which is have some sort of written agreement. I don't know what has caused the postponement of this getting done a little faster other than 
we do seem to have at multiple times multiple balls juggling in the air. And uh, as a township administrator, when we received funds from ARPA, we had to sign a document. We didn't just, they didn't just hand us money. We had to sign a document agreeing to the, uh, the terms. We have to do quarterly reporting. We have to submit receipts. And once they're submitted, when we get to the end of the quarter, they're reviewed and then we get a check. And while I would love to just, you know, write you a check and hand it to you, I can't do that. We don't have a checkbook here at the county board. And I'm going to follow our legal counsel's advice, even when I don't agree with it. And she can absolutely tell you that I have fought her on multiple issues. Um, and whether you call it a contract or an MOU, I don't really care. Um, or how you refer to it, but I will be a no. And, and that has nothing to do with my support for the program um, because I am 100% behind it. Thank you. I'm gonna let Micah speak and then I think I would like to call the rule. Okay. okay, so I am 100% for this. I'm my sister, my, who doesn't have someone they know that uses your services? Um, I don't have a problem with a contract. I don't have a problem with an agreement. I think that is actually makes sense, especially if we as a county have to report anything back to just send out money, I think um, is not a good idea. You have spent money and no I don't know if that meets the requirements that for reporting, as long as you can provide receipts, I don't have a problem for paying what has been used. I do have kind of a problem that there was an agreement that we would do this and then write a check if that's what I heard correctly. But um, I would go ahead and vote for this just because you have spent the money. But going forward, I think we need an agreement. Thank you. Just last thing I want to say is ARPA dollars are taxpayer dollars. This is not taxpayer money. And the, again, it is very specific what we can do with this money. It is very specific. Right. So this is not there are no federal guidelines, no requirements for any of the things that happen with the ARPA dollars that you received, Jackie, or anyone else received, or the CARES dollars. There aren't those ties to this. The big restriction is what you can use it for. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for a roll call, please. Okay, thank you. Parker? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Ian Schlotman? Yes. Freeman? Yes. Bueller? No. Pretzel? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Trenier? No. Van Dyne? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, thank you. So you'll be getting more details from staff and we'll move forward from there. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for being so attentive. I really, really, really um, appreciate it. We have to you. make a motion to uh, don't leave the two month report. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Can we can we, get, hold on? Hey guys. Can we get a motion? Can I get a motion to approve as amended, please? Motion pretzel, second Dean Schlotman, previous Van Dyne, second Parker. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate the support. We will be having um different set up going forward so to to uh, uh go with what the state's attorney is suggesting so i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay moving on to um number two creating an ordinance requiring notification by the will county division of transportation on road projects can i get a motion motion pretzel second ballot okay and then discussion uh, mr richmond put your light on Thank you. Excellent. All right. So, um, in working with uh, Mr. Ronaldson, we came up with um, I'll call it criteria based on. Let me pull that document up. I had it and I shut it down. Based on the reporting of projects in that, and actually, what we did is we took it into two uh, specific areas. One, the reporting to the public, public notifications, and that. And I think that we came up with a solution that's going to be good for not only the residents, but also good for staff. And we're going to make it easy for them to actually implement. Um, so basically, we're going to focus on uh, 
major road projects um, notification to the public in that. And then the notifications will be sent out to the property uh, owners, which are the ones that are going to be on the tax records. So we'll be able to just pull that database and send the information out. Um, the second part is going to be towards the county board, uh, the notification process and that. And what they're going to do is every two years is kind of give us an update of what's going on. We also have uh, Joe and I worked with uh, Jeff on a on a spreadsheet so that this way you always have accurate information. Even as, if it's not in your district, you'll know if somebody asks you for a project that's out of your district, that information will be provided. And then for the for the board's perspective, what we'll do is we'll be able to every year, two years when a new board comes in or new board members come in, they'll do an update and basically kind of lay out what's going on. So this way you're well aware of what's going on in your district. So they can't be any more. You never told me about this or I was unaware of this or that. And at the very bottom of this, it just kind of lays out what information we're, what's going to be had on that in, on that. So the notification that's going to be going out to the public is going to be a quarter mile um, north, south, east, or west of the project, and it's going to be for major projects. It's not going to be concerned with things like bridge improvements or you know uh, intersections or that, where it usually only impacts just a few residents or that. So, um, is Jeff here? Yes. Oh. Did I did I, uh, all you got to do is shake your head? Yes. Did I accurately portray our conversation and the and Jeff and his team are comfortable with this? So, um, thank you. I know that this was a long time getting it together and organized. We we've re looked at it a couple different times, but um, thanks for taking the time and doing that. And Jeff, I appreciate your support on this. I think it's important for us to go ahead and and notify our residents what's going on. At, because some of these projects can go seven years before one phase and the next phase happens. And we do have turnover in county board. So it'd be a good thing beginning of the year, bring it up, and the new board member will know right away in January, hey, this is what's going on. And um, then when then Jeff presents it again in the summertime, as he usually does with the whole present uh, plan of his, they would then get a second hit at it. And like then they'll be making a lot more sense at that time. And Joe, you had your, want to go ahead? Did did you make that motion? I I didn't catch that, but I do. Is it on the table? It is on. Yeah, the table. Okay, okay. Um, I just want to say that you know initially the Department of Transportation wasn't uh, wasn't in full support of this at the beginning, you know, and we have been working on it for quite a while. And I want to congratulate you, Jim and and Steve, and also the Department of Transportation. You know, it's nice to see that. Um, Two entities were at the polar opposites of this when it started, and then you guys kind of worked together and negotiated back and forth to make both sides uh, fairly happy with with the outcome. Um, and you know, it it is a good idea to notify the residents. Um, but lastly, you know, this this will never stop any county board member from contacting our director of transportation and, and setting up a private meeting uh, anytime anytime you're available I'm sure he would be available too to, to discuss the projects in your in your district and then in turn you can go ahead and let your residents know um, how you feel suited as well so I just want to say good job on that guys and and uh, let's I'm ready to move forward with it yeah that's great Joe thank you Joe that's great Joe and um that that's what's good when we have a team effort and people get together and have a conversation At the beginning. You're never going to agree because everyone has different ideas. I see your hand, Micah. Um, so, but it does take, it does make sense to do that. And then I think Joe, probably when the new board members see the presentation at the beginning of the year, they will be like, oh, I will want to have a conversation with Jeff. So I understand more of what's going on in my district. So we have Raquel next. Okay, so I just have a question where it says um, property owner, the person whose name is in a real estate tax bill. So I own, um, I own or manage uh, an apartment complex and I'm in New York or Colorado or Texas or somewhere not in that area. Will the, will the residents of that apartment complex be notified? Because they're the ones who would be directly affected by that. So they'd be defect, affected by the project that they're right. renting. Yeah. And their names obviously would not be on the no. RBT. Right. Yeah. So it's no, we will not be notifying them. That is a extra level of effort above and beyond that would actually burden Jeff's group. 
it'd be up to the property owner to, to notify them, which I think makes all the sense in the world because we can't reach everybody because those, how many apartment renters are in each of these buildings and who are they, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it just makes sense to make it easier on staff to put this notification out there. Also too, I think with our enhancement to our website and that they'll be able to, there's gonna be a link on here. Worst case scenario is that apartment owner could send the information out by electronically and say, here, if you got concerns, go look it up. At some point in time, we, we, yeah, it's, it's inefficient to notify a renter. Oh, my, so I don't think it's in if it's inefficient for us because we don't know when the person's moving in and out. But I think the letter that the DOT sends to somebody who's a property owner, let's say Annette Parker owns a property and there's 16 apartments, you know, in that letter where we could say, you know, we would recommend that you inform your renters that this is going on because they will be the ones impacted by the by it. But they aren't losing any property. If there would be a need for any easement or anything like that, they would just be impacted by the work that would be doing yep. getting done. You turned your mic off. Yeah, I did accidentally. I mean, I did purposely, but I had a follow up. So what would be what would be the legal reason why we can't require the property owner who's renting that out to notify the residents of but that I don't property. think we can make them do it. Can't make them do it. We can recommend that they do it mm -hmm. in, the, in the letter. I think that makes good sense to say, hey, you know, you have, if you if you have a property that is being rented, we recommend that you inform your renter so that they know that this work is getting done. Right. You know, go ahead. Um, County Board Member Mitchell, this is an ordinance related to additional requirement for the Department of Transportation. It does not negate their responsibilities under the Illinois Department of Transportation. Under that requirement, the property address would get notification. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Um, Micah? Thank you. Um I would have my hand up because I keep putting myself in these corners and can't see me. You're, no, it's good because I don't see to my left off. Um, yes. Yeah, Frankie and I are over here hiding. Um, I know that one of the concerns was the cost of the mail, and I just want to be sure that the department has that funding available to them for the extra cost. I do. And that's a yes. Okay. Thank you. And Frankie, were you going to say anything or? I, I, so we're, I mean, we're dealing with the same thing with land use, right? That's what the kind of special meetings for later today. But I, I know there's a lot of thought that the processes we have in place don't work. But as I sit in these committee meetings month after month, and I see members from the public come to speak on them, I'm reminded that it does work. People do know about these projects and they, they come all the time to land use and public works too, I'm sure, and say, I just found out about this, but you did find out about it. So when I, I, it's easy for me to sit in this chair and say, we need to do more. But when you talk to staff about what they do and how much time they already put into this, there, there's a lot that's being done to make sure that people are made aware of this. And I, I, I do know that the process we have in place works. It's not perfect. But yeah, so I'm not sure we need to really, you know, start from scratch on these things. But I, I support this. I'm yeah. just saying. I, I don't think we're starting from scratch. It's just an additional thing. And because uh, with land use cases, typically the people who are not directly uh, notified because they're not a, a, uh, adjacent to the property that's having the a proposed zoning change or anything special use permit, they know they're notified when they see that um, sign go up that say, hey, there's a PBC hearing and PZC hearing on it. That's when they're seeing it. That's when we're getting the other neighbors that are not adjacent to it. In a road project like this, uh, a large one. So now we have one down Piatone Wilmington Road. We're doing a study there. So people were notified of that through that or we were notified by, by email. Um, not everyone could go as Jeff did not see me there last night. I could not attend. So, but I'm aware of it, of course. So, um, 
So you have that notification, but that's it. Once this is done and somebody moves out of their home, the new person comes in, there is not a notification for a while and they may not exchange that information. So to me, I think more information to the, to the, the residents is always a good thing. I do want to thank Steve and Jim and Joe and Jeff because it took a lot of time and effort to get that to where we are today. So, and I would like to get a roll call, please. Right. Steve, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. The purpose of this whole thing was to prevent things like 143rd Street. Because this can happen again if we don't do stuff like this. And there's no doubt about it. The people didn't want 143rd Street in the beginning, but we never knew that really other than you know, I heard a bunch of people mad and I was at those meetings and it's like a dog and pony show when we were going to that stuff. You know, so uh, the, the, the comments is something that we didn't, we never heard. We didn't know how many people were against it. We didn't know a lot of the stuff. So if we knew that 159th Street was in this case, I'm using an example. We knew 159th Street was gonna be done. There'd be no need to do 143rd Street and we wouldn't have had to go through this whole elaborate process. We wouldn't need the road. We didn't know at that time when it first started, we didn't know 355 was gonna be completed and how that was gonna affect things. So it would take 10 more minutes to go down to 80 from 143rd Street and you can get on any road you want. So there's a lot of reasons why we needed to do this. Because just because we were doing it, so we started and then two years later, we find out that IDOT did something or the state did something. Maybe we don't need the road anymore. So maybe we just back off and don't spend all that money on something we really don't need. That's the purpose of this. So um, I think it's a, a good compromise from what I had put forth at the beginning, and I'm happy with it. Thank you. Okay, can we have a roll call, Terry, please? Parker? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Dean Schlotman? Yes. Freeman? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Pretzel? Yes. Richmond? Trenier? Yes. Van Dyne? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on from there. We go to other old business. I do not have any other old business. So we move into new business. So today we have Anna sitting from <clears throat> Answer. She's going to give us an update where we are with ARPA, what money there is still available, if any, and then what we might do with it. So go ahead. We've had conversations about different things, and she's got a presentation. So you are on, Anna. Thank oh. you so much. Let me get it. Do we have to vote on anything? No, it's just a presentation. Right. It's just a presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you all so much for having me again this morning. Um, as Chair Ogala mentioned, my name is Anna Sinton, Director with Answer Advisory, um, now Accenture. We are here today to share a little bit more about the progress of ARPA, um, share the quarterly update, and then as Chair Ogala mentioned, talk a little bit about the remaining dollars we have. As a reminder, the obligation deadline is pending. It is December 31st, 2024. As you can see here on the first slide, as a reminder, we have six pillars that were designated by county board um, just about two years ago, uh, allocating dollars to each of these primary areas. Uh, as you can see on the right hand column, we have three pillars with remaining dollars. I will talk a little bit more about that at the end of the presentation, um, but just here as a reminder, a snapshot of what we're currently working with. Next slide. Unmet needs was the pillar that was designated for local units of government who did not receive direct allocations um, from ARPA. That was the library districts, park districts, which included park departments and special recreation associations, townships and fire districts, as well as Laraway communications for the radio migration project, heritage corridor and the forest preserve. As of right now, the um, fire districts have all been expended. So the remaining local units of government are libraries, parks, and townships. You can see here that libraries have 15% or 15 projects, excuse, excuse me, that are complete. 
21 projects under the park district sub pillar are complete and seven under the townships are complete and fully expended. Layerway Communications is just about halfway through their expenditures. They are working closely with the municipalities are working closely with um, the communications department to issue those funds in response to the um, equipment that's been purchased. And uh, a spotlight here, Heritage Corridor has finalized their scope. They are working on a marketing and tourism campaign to highlight attractions that may have been impacted as a result of COVID and will be expending their dollars um, through the course of this next year. The health pillar had um, applic subrecipient applicants as part of this designation in a conjunction with the health department, CAC and Sunny Hill. Um, a spotlight here we wanted to highlight was the Joliet Fire Department has issued a, a new program that we're supporting um, with their paramedic, their paramedic team going out into the community to provide training and additional support in response to mental health crises. Um, a couple also that have been in process, Cornerstone has started to expend funds. They are expanding their services and footprint in Will County, providing mental health and substance use disorder support. 515 Fitness has completed their facility expansion, um, providing services in Braidwood, which is a new community for them. And then Will County Health Department has spent over just about 2 million of their total allocation. Um, they had been working with on um, updating their staffing, COVID-19 testing kits, outreach activities, and um, improvements to their facility in regards to technology. The economic development pillar um, had primarily the support for local businesses, small businesses and nonprofits that were directly impacted by the pandemic. So those have um, been fully expended. So the remaining projects that we have are focused on housing and support for homeless residents. Will Grenny Medical Clinic is working through their program called Housing, Healthcare and Hope. Um, it's a voucher program to support residents that are homeless or at risk of homelessness to ensure that they either get into um, long term housing or re re retain their existing housing. Um, we're also supporting Guardian Angel Community Services. They have spent um, just over 344,000 on their domestic violence uh, support program. So getting uh, victims of domestic violence out of their situations and into stable housing, providing wraparound support services like case management and utility support. Habitat for Humanity um, has fully broken ground it is, is in, and is in process of completing their Arrowhead Duplex project, which is in Elwood. Um, they have expended just about 60% of their funds and are expected to complete all of those housing developments um, in the second quarter of 2025. The Housing Authority of Joliet was awarded to just over $2 million to break ground on a project in Joliet. Um, they are in the planning and bid out phase, so they are expected to complete that in summer to fall of 2025, so um, just about a year from now. Um, infrastructure being the largest pillar uh, provided allocations in $500,000 increments to local municipalities, as well as targeted engagement for land use projects and um, facility improvements across the county. So a few spotlights here, Frankfurt Township has completed their project, um, full renovation of their culvert system. Um, the village of Romeoville has supported the development of their stormwater drainage system in Hampton Park subdivision. And Bonnie Bray has um, done quite a bit of site restoration. This is a project in conjunction with land uses CDBG dollars. So this actually leveraged a much larger project to support this entire um, district. And then finally, Creek Township just recently closed on their new property in in the area for their community center. They purchased it from a pre previous nonprofit. Um, so it is very well built out and can support uh, programming and staff um, nearly immediately. So we, um, the ARPA dollars supported the purchase of that and we're gonna continue to work with them um, and get progress updates on their um, movement. So, that is our current progress that I wanted to share and that puts us now in a position where we have a, just about a million dollars left to re-obligate. 
So um, you can see up there on the right hand side in the table that under the three pillars, there was um, entities that for whatever reason they may have um, chosen not to expend funds, were unable to be contacted, chose to return funds, were um, identified as ineligible or had something come up that um, resulted in ineligibility. So for unmet needs, we have $333,052.55 um, due to an expenditure. So that is dedicated to unmet needs. The health pillar, the largest um, item there that was unexpended was for equipment within the morgue. There was a much greater um, estimate at the time and the final expenditure came in far under budget. So that's where you're seeing that 768,000, which takes up the bulk of that, um, those funds to be reallocated. And then there's just 10,000 in the economic development pillar. Um, after the review of projects, this one particular small business, unfortunately, um, was no longer in existence. And so um, cannot issue the funds. It's not eligible per treasury. So um, next slide, thank you. Uh, our recommendation at this point is to reallocate to internal county projects that align with the approved priorities. Um, as a reminder, the timeline for new projects, so seeking applicants or identifying new activities, um, we don't believe would be feasible because of the award obligation deadline. And these funds are still subject to all of the eligibility, feasibility, compliance, and federal reporting requirements. So between now and the end of this year, we do have to be able to identify where that remaining 1.1 million is going to go. Um, with the risk being, if that is not obligated, it would be returned to the federal government, which I don't think we want to do. Um, and obligated means that we enter into some sort of MOU contract or agreement um, to identify the source of the funds and what we expect to do with them. So with that, I will leave it open to questions or discussion at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. That's that's a great presentation. And we recently found out that we were going to have the, a large amount come from yes. the morgue. So at one time we thought we had 436,000 and now we found out we have a lot more money. Um, so that was just happened last week when we spoke. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up to the floor and Julie, you have your light on. Uh, thank you. So, Anna, do you have a list of all of the entities that were awarded money but haven't received it? Do you have that information for us? Huh? Whether it be a government organization or a nonprofit, do you have that list? Um, I would like to clarify when you say has not received it, is that have not expended money or not been awarded? Is not, I guess. The word would be not been awarded. So all of the entities have been awarded the funds. They have entered into a subrecipient grant agreement, MOU of some sort. Uh, so then I'm looking for the the people that didn't get the money. So they or, weren't so awarded they, the dollars, right? Okay, we're not going so back. The to list those, of the people. What? We're not going to go back to those. I, I am asking for those organizations that could get money, but for some reason they haven't received it. So I'll be specific, uh, Hands, Hands for Hope in Joliet, did they get their money? I know that they are a grant recipient. Did they get the money? I wanna make sure they get, because I've had conversation with them, there's a lot of confusion and since I can't call you and say, let's get this done, it seems to be in limbo. So how do we help them? And again, it leads to my request. I think it's a legitimate request. I think the board members should have a list of the people that didn't get their money. So if there is a situation where they need a little help, we help them, we get it done. Sure, so, so I, We'll read it. All of the organizations have been awarded. This is a reimbursement program. So if they have not received money, we're working with them. We have project managers that work with them regularly, daily. Hands of Hope is an awarded agency mm -hmm. that 
is in process and I can turn to um, Chase his their project manager. Okay. Okay. So I just want to say clearly that I don't know what needs to be done, but I want to make sure that they get their money. Yes, they will get their money. Okay. All right. Yes. They are in okay. they're in process and they have received money. All right. And so just in case there might be an other organizations out there that are struggling, can we get that list? The list of the people who haven't received the money yet. So they they are working Anna and her group are working with every single person, group, whatever, that was awarded dollars. If they haven't gotten those dollars, it's because they aren't to the point that they would be getting those dollars yet. So if Hands of Hope hasn't and Chase is here, maybe Chase could address that specific case. Could you just put your light on? Yeah, so, so um, Hands of Hope is a organization that has expanded about, I would probably say close to 40 to 50 percent so far. So they are in the process of things and they do submit probably on a by monthly basis. So um, I, I, I do know that they have gotten to that point. So, yeah. You're not on. There, there's no risk that you're aware of that they're not going to get the money. You, Correct. They, yeah, yeah, they're, yes. they're fully out here, yes. So after December 31st of this year, all of the organizations that are still executing their projects, seeking reimbursement, have an additional two years. So everything has to be expended by the end of December 31st, 2026. Okay, thank you. And if, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the organizations that were on the list are who is giving the money back. Correct. If they weren't on the list, correct. that means they're still in the process yes. of getting their money. Okay, That's correct. Thank you. Uh, Joe, you want to say something? Yeah, thank you. Anna, um, I am looking at this slide about unmet needs entity, and I I do have some concerns about some of these smaller townships that didn't, they chose to not utilize the money that was offered to them. Is this, is this a, a last chance uh, circumstance here? Um, are we moving on for sure, or do we get to... Is it is it too late? So do you know do you know why maybe? Yeah, and I'm also I mean offline I would like to yeah maybe you could explain to us a certain entities it. and why what their reason is I don't sure. want to do it in an open forum but okay. um so th this is basically that we have to move on and and reallocate yes I and I will say we have made every attempt I'm sure you have yeah. to call okay. email go on site reach out to staff. Um, so, yes, this is this list is the last end of the line. And so if there, I'm happy to speak offline, if there's further questions, mm -hmm. um, we can absolutely have that conversation. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that's so Joe, if there's something ask her and then I mean. Next, you know, we can allocate the funds differently if that's the case, but they have reached out to so many and for some reason, they've just some of them just decided not to do the project for whatever reason. And I, I do want to be clear that there's differing reasons for each of these. So some could have said, I want to give it back. Some could have not responded to multiple attempts for contact. Some, um, I know there's been a couple that did not want to register for SAM.gov, which is an absolute bare minimum requirement. So there are differing reasons. I'm happy to talk about those at any point um, for more detail. Right, so re the reporting requirements is enough to deter some small groups. Yeah, yeah. very well could. Yeah. yeah. So, any any other questions? Any other questions, Jackie? Do you have a question? I want Joe to get some details. Offline. Yeah. As okay. I as I asked for, she had asked me. She was just asking me to get information for an, another entity as well, since I'm already going to be asking. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had asked too for various different. Yeah. Ones. Okay. Well, okay. they just didn't want it. They said no, whatever. So sometimes they do. We don't know why that happened. So, okay. I guess there are no other questions relating to the presentation. So thank you, Anna. And thank you, Chase, for coming up and clarifying for Julie that. They have received dollars. They are in the process and. Um, 
that hopefully will settle her mind. And sometimes a person in an organization might not know what's going on with the whole group and they think they're not receiving something when in actuality they are. So. Yeah. And if there are ever questions, I know Kim and Judy have shared that you can reach out to them directly. They can relay that to us. Um, we're happy to touch base on any particular organizations. Um, we do quarterly reporting, which is um, publicly available on the federal, um, the Treasury's website, as well as on ARPA, our internal website. So, um, right. again, if there's. Yeah, I mean, our county website he has all this on, on it. So go ahead, Jackie. Um, I just wanted to say thanks to Anna, Chase, and Sabrina. Yes. <laughs> I've only really talked to Sabrina via email, so I wasn't sure if that was really her. Um, you guys have been very responsive, very helpful. Um, and I would also say thanks to Samantha from the county executive staff. Um, I've, you know, when you only use a piece of software maybe once every six months, it's very difficult to um, <laughs> yeah. get it right the second time when you try to do it. And they've been very patient and very helpful. And I, I don't know if we've gotten our check yet, but I'm sure it's on its way. And um, I just wanted to say thank you and how much I appreciate you guys. So thank you. great job. Thank you. Yeah, right. right. That, that's what my intent was. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you again. Appreciate it. All right, so I suppose we'll see you coming back maybe next month even because we should hopefully come up with a good plan for that. So, okay. Okay, next we have uh, number two is amending the parameters for the expenditures of American Rescue Plan funds. Can I get a motion? Motion Slotman, second, Freeman. Okay, so with this right now, as you saw with the presentation that Anna gave, there's so much money in the unmet needs, so much money in economic development. So they're in different pillars and then, 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 then the health. So they're in different pillars. So because uh, the time that we're, we're here looking at is short to get it, we have to get them appropriated to being used for a specific purpose. Then um, this, this resolution will go ahead and bring them all under uh, one umbrella for us so that we can look at what needs the county has, and then we can decide that there's a whole group of projects that are available that could be internally paid for through ARPA dollars, um, and we'll have that whole list. We we had to increase the list because, like I said, the dollars change, so we'll get that. But we'll be doing that. So we're just going to take it. This is just taking it, moving it from the five pillars or six pillars and putting under on that needs and that way we can know which one are we putting it in? You're creating a new pillar called the Will County Internal Projects Pillar. Okay, it's a new pillar called the Will County Internal Projects Pillar. So all the money will go there and then we can distribute it to the the projects that need to be, be done, yeah. So I see some hands or green rather, no hands. I think Meta yours was first. Yeah, I just I was looking at the resolution on the dollar amounts, and I guess the dollar amounts are the same on both. I'm not sure that the resolution is totally clear. I mean, I can see we're taking it out of the. Are you guys looking at the resolution? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the resolution, the dollar amounts are the same in both, and so I was expecting it to like move and you know. No. So one is the whereas paragraph that uh -huh. says you have this money, and then you're resolving to take that same money and put it into the pillar. It's just the way all of our resolutions are written, that you start with the whereas paragraphs mm -hmm. as to what you would like to happen, and then you're resolving that it will happen. Okay. So, so that's why the dollar amounts match, there. and okay. it would be a total dollar amount of $1,189,015. Yeah. I, yeah. I anticipated oh, seeing Will County Internal Projects Pillar and then having that be the total that we're moving over. Do you know what I mean? I'm oh, sorry. like we do on yes. a finance uh -huh. offense. Yeah, yeah, like it didn't show yeah. that new pillar and that's where it's yeah. going to go. Now, that's why I'm sorry, I yeah. should have been clearer about that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know what we can, if we want to change that at all. I don't I, know. I don't know. If it's legal. I don't know. I Whatever have Marcy look at it. Wise. She said it was fine. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> From the finance perspective. Just to make sure. <laughs> go ahead, Jackie. Um, my only question is, okay, we're moving it to this internal projects pillar, which I had to read that 3 or 4 times. It was just, I'm kind of with met, um, board member Mueller that I really thought that there should just be a total and it should say now this is going to be in the will county internal projects pillar. But anyway, 
and and I agree. It's it's like finance, how we do things on finance, and it just doesn't read the same. But um, we don't list anywhere in here what that Will County internal projects pillar is going to be. Correct. Like we don't have. So remember, Jackie, we just found out we had new dollars available. We only for a long time we thought we had four hundred thirty-six thousand. No, no, no. I got that part, but I just feel like, and maybe Jim can help enlighten me, board member. Oh, Richmond. Okay, so I, I just saw yesterday's presentation in finance. I, I did see that we got an email. I haven't had a chance to look at it again, and I just wanted to inquire: Is this money in any way? affecting the numbers that you presented yesterday? Did you use this number in any way for your projections yesterday? That's okay. Were, was it specific to the part of finding that missing 2 million? Because I don't seem like that's what it was because that money all seemed to come now out of capital or out of facilities uh, or equipment or whatever. It was all part of that spreadsheet and part of those okay. color coded. Okay, I'll get back to it then. Thank you. I just wasn't really sure because this doesn't say what the Will County internal projects pillar is going to be. So you're saying right now there isn't anything. So I would say it's probably just a bucket. Or is it in? I would say it's event? just a bucket. Is it's just a bucket. Okay, that's that. That answers my question. Thank you. Were you going to ask? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I agree. I feel like they were in all these pillars, health, economic development, unmet needs. And now we're creating a new pillar, Will County internal projects. I feel like that should be its own pillar because it looks like with the, underneath within the internal projects, we're still going to spend $845,000 no. within the health no. of internal projects. Be it further resolved, Will County Board approves the following amended allocation of ARPA funding into the Will County internal project pillar from the following pillars. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, got you there. And then the other question, the portion that you took out for those Sunny Hill beds of 265 or whatever it was. 200, I think. Was that out of any of this money or is that already removed from this money? Marcy, do you mind In the coming up here? I didn't bring any of my... What didn't? Right. I don't have it. The beds. Right. Oh, do you? It was the beds. I just want to know, is that already taken out or not? So you're still in the budgeting process. So it's all moving parts at this point in time. So you can allocate how you want to use that money in the budgeting process. So yesterday in the presentation, yes, um, that is one of the items that Andrew has said we can use the money on. Yes. So it's still in it's still in this dollar amount. It would be in that okay. dollar amount. Yes. yes. That's all I was asking. Right. Thank you. So so that's like different dollars than the rest of our, our levy. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if I can get a motion, any a second discussion, any, yeah, there's anybody else want to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, can we get a roll call then Terry? Oh yeah. You can turn it off too. Parker. Yes. Balich. Berkowitz. Yeah. Dean Schlotman? Yes. Freeman? Mueller? Yes. Pretzel? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Trenier? Van Dyne? No. Williams? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to number three, distribution of remaining ARPA funds. As Marcy mentioned, we're in the budgeting process, so that will be going for forward next month, um, taking those dollars and, and putting them towards something specific. Number four, raffle license waiver provision requests. Mahoney sure. isn't here. Can I get a motion? Motion Dean Schlotman. Second, Berkowitz. Any conversation? Okay. Can I get a roll call? A previous roll, sorry. You can do previous. All in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Number five, authorizing the county executive to execute an intergovernmental agreement with Stagger State's Fire Protection District to provide access to to provide access to the countywide radio system. Can I get a motion? Motion Freeman. Motion Freeman. Second. Second Mueller. Previous second. Richmond. Second Berkowitz. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Number six. Fiscal year 24 justice assistance grant, as we call it, the JAG grant intergovernmental agreement, IGA with the city of Joliet. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second Freeman, previous, previous Parker, second Berkowitz, all in That's, favor? I'm sorry, okay. Mr. And Joe is a yes. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion carries. Joe needs water. <laughs> Number seven, appointments by the county executive. First is approving the county executive appointments to the Black Walnut Drainage District of Will County. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second okay, Parker. Parker. Any conversation? Previous role, Dean Schlotman, second Berkowitz. All in favor? Motion carries. Any opposed? Sorry, any opposed? Motion carries. Number two, approving the county executive appointments to the Florence Wesley Union Drainage District Number One of Will County. And motion. Motion Van Dyne, second Mueller. Any conversation? Well, Julie has a question. I'm just wondering why the documentation isn't attached for this. Um, it seems periodically, and, and that would not be a question that we would answer because these are submitted by the county executive. We get the, the so, it's a get them sent to you prior to the agenda. But it should be attached to no, the no. Yeah, they oh, have it. Okay, it's not on my computer. So I'm just telling you I opened it up and I don't see don't see that. Let me, it's Hold not on. there. Which one? That's all. She's talking about Florence Wesley. Kind of hard to say, I know. Okay, I mean, okay this is what was. It's not there. It's on Florence. I'm, yes, it's there for Florence, but it isn't Listen. there for the. No. It's not even there well, for Florence. I don't know. We're not to that yet. I'm not sure what she can say. Okay. So, what appointments happen every month is the beginning of the month, the county executive office sends us via an email. These are the appointments coming forward for whatever um, whatever board needs uh, uh, some to be a re reappointed, new appointment, what have you. You get that in the email, and then that is attached. And for some reason, Julie, I have no idea why it isn't. But okay, so we have a motion and a second. Previous. Previous. Parker. Second. I don't remember who did the motion. I made the um, I mean, yeah. Joe did. So it. then. Yeah. Previous previous was Parker, second Dean Schlotman, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, number three, approving the county executive appointments to the Workforce Investment Board of Will County. Motion by Mueller, Mueller second Freeman. Any conversation? Previous role. Previous Van Dyne, second. second Richmond, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on from there to other new business. I do not have any other new business at this time. Request for state's attorney's opinion. I do not have anything at this time. Uh, committee reports land use. Frankie Pretzel, Chair Pretzel. Oh, uh, put your mic on, please. You can just put it on. That mic that goes on. She is the vice chair. Oh, right. So um, land use and development um, meeting this month went fairly smoothly. Everybody was in agreement, I believe, on every case. Um, the big one was the um, Hard Rock Quarry in Bolingbrook that everybody was kind of anticipating. They requested to postpone until January. The committee um, voted unanimously to grant that request. So I, I think it's a fairly simple agenda. Well, that's a nice change. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a nice change. Thank you. Moving on to finance, Chair Richmond. I think we had a, a pretty good conversation and we've got our levy and budget to move forward. Um, aside from the $2 million curveball Thursday night, I think we're moving along quite nicely. So. Okay, thank you. Moving on to public works and transportation, Chair Van Dyne. 
Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I had to skip away for last week, so I would like to uh, offer the vice chair to, to chime in if you if you accept that. Thank you. <laughs> Skipped away. Well, you didn't skip away. You were, you know, on business working on your tan. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but no, everything went well. We had our conversation, which we already talked a little bit about on the. Um, uh, cleaning up and the notifications and all that. So I won't belabor that. And uh, everything else was just basically business as usual. So uh, nothing else to add. Thank you. Okay, moving on to public health and safety, Chair Freeman. Oh, we had a pretty easy meeting. We had lots of reports. We went over, um, I had lots of questions. Um, and uh, I would like to make sure a resolution is brought forward next month about uh, payment for beds. Yeah, that, that came late for some reason yes. and didn't uh, come through the executives. Food, so I just want to yeah. throw it out there. It's the end of the month. <laughs> so if we could get that on there. So it's not payment for beds. Oh, it's, it's for room. So it's right room no, rates. We didn't receive anything on room rates either. So yeah. it hasn't come forward yet. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Next month, I would like yeah. to see something forward. Well, on the, we'll it, get it, it from room rate. The right. executive's office will bring it forward. Yes. Yep. So if staff could work with Sunny Hill. That would be great. But that was really the only thing that um, came out. I'll have more of a report come next week. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cool. Moving on to legislative chair Berkowitz. Don't turn, don't touch it. You're on. Thank you, Judy. Uh, we're working on updating the legislative agenda right now. So right. Yeah, it takes time to get that. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. Moving on to capital improvements and IT, Chair Mueller. Good morning, still. Oh my gosh. Um, we had our usual facilities update, and um, I have been sitting in on all of the website. The, the calls talking about uh, the surveys and all the input from public and staff and everyone regarding new a new web presence for the county. Um, so it's a long, long, tedious process, folks. It's and there's a whole bunch of us on the calls. So know that there's lots of coverage from all over the county um, weighing in on this important subject. So um, that's what we did. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to a new website. That would be great when we have that finished. Good. Moving on executive, we have that, you just had that. Next, we move to landfill, Chair Dean Schlattman. So this month we voted to move the solid waste plan forward. So for any of you who want some very excited nighttime reading <laughs> before we, uh, <laughs> before you know we vote on it, the full board, please look it over. Um, <clears throat> but please remember it is a living document. It can change at, you know, any time if we see fit based on the needs of the county. And also we um, did some, we were able to get some discussion on um, some plans moving forward within the landfill. And as that continues to go, we will uh, see how all that works out. Thank you. Okay, there, that uh, completes our regular committees. And we move on to ad hoc uh, committees. Uh, Access Will County meets after this. So. Um, Mr. Butler, he doesn't have any updates yet because he hasn't had his meeting. Um, ad hoc, the old courthouse, Janet, ditto with Janet and ordinance review. Um, they'll be meeting next week as well. So you never know how the calendar falls and puts us in this funny situation. Okay, next move into public comment. Do we have any public comment? Nothing, no public comment online, no public comment. Thank you. Announcements and reports by the chair. I don't have anything further than what I've said. Thank you. Uh, a need for an executive session. Mary's shaking her head. No. Uh, approval. So if I can get a motion to approve the county board agenda as amended. Motion Mueller. Second Richmond. Previous. Previous. Freeman. Second. Second Parker. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. I get a motion to adjourn. Motion Van Dyne, so, second Mueller, all in favor, aye. Through. All right, thank you. 1144. Uh, right. Uh,